Clone sat on the beach, hugging her legs close to her body. Ordinarily, a beach would be considered beautiful or serene, but this beach was not any of those. Long ago, it was used as dumping grounds for countless corpses left over from Yarm's massacres, and since the grotesque dumping of bodies had been switched to occur in the dungeon, the sea had continued to fester, turning a disgusting urine color. Of course, the beach had much more issues because of it as well. Acidic bubbles slowly rose to the surface of the water, then hovered into the air, floating a few feet above the surface before popping, spouting acid as they did so. However, neither the color nor the stench of festering meat was what made humans stay away. Somehow, the terraforming occurred by the past caused the massive, plentiful, and aggressive creatures that lurked below the surface to rise, and some hum hungered for human meat. Clone, however, knew nothing of this ocean. She simply loved to sit and watch the ocean. She in fact liked the smell because she had very little experience with quartering the smell of corpses and sulfur with bad or good. She was, after all, only years old, technically. Every few days she would fly on a broom to the, the, this spot, often hundreds of miles away from her residing place, just to sit and think. Her mind was currently stuck on what she thought of Yarn. For the few months she had known him, he seemed nice, but a little odd. She thought she could always feel some aura of sadness around him, but he always smiled in her presence. However, she knew his true nature. Behind that sadness and comforting smile was a twisted person, one who had killed countless people, and one with more power than any other person in known history. She had once seen a lord walk in the arms room, and overheard what sounded like pleas for mercy as the sound of fire filled the room. She ran in to see what had happened and if Yarn was in danger, only to see a charred corpse of the Lord on the ground, burned by Yaron, Yarn's dragon. Upon seeing her walk into the room, mortified, Yarn simply averted his head and said nothing to her. A servant picked up what remained of the corpse and left the room with it, silent and meek. However, Despite what she had heard and seen, she knew Yarn was far from an evil man. So, contemplating her feelings on him, she simply sat and watched the tide recede and push forward. Pop! A bubble popped, spitting acid on her hair. She quickly flicked the droplets off before the acid severed any strands of hair. Normally, Clone would be playing a game where she would channel her magic to shoot brimstone at each of the bubbles that rose from the ocean before they popped naturally. Apparently, having fun with her dark magic would not only help make her magic stronger, but also give her more resistance to the mental effects of channeling magic. However, she was too preoccupied with her thoughts to do so. She decided to start concentrating on popping the bubbles again. She shot brimfire at each of the bubbles as they rose, the red flames arcing across the sky. A few minutes later, she stood up, dusted the dark colored sand from her trousers, and started to walk back to her room, leaning against a massive tree of dead coral exposed on the sand. As she did so, she felt a tremor in the ground. She turned to see a massive shark bursting from the ocean, spraying sand and water out as it flung itself into the air. The shark, Clone knew, was called a reaver shark, twice as big as her, lined with three sets of teeth and ravenous for human flesh. In this age, humans were not at the top of the food chain, far from it in fact. However, Clone was far from a normal human. She was a copy of a demigod who brought calamity with her dark magic, not fish food. Clone raised her hand and in a burst of heat and wind, flung the massive creature flying like a ragdoll a hundred feet away. Some fishermen had tried to impress Clone a while back by telling her that reaver sharks grew to over a mile in length. But, after witnessing the massive worm, devourer of gods, D.O.G., Dog, she'd like to call him, a mile was hardly medium in size for a creature. They failed to impress her, and so did seeing one of the sharks in person. The shark promptly fled the shores. Clone positioned the worm as if to sit on it, then promptly lifted off with it, and she flew off. 
clone, reminded of the colossal worm, pondered about his character as well. To her, the root worm had always seemed like a mentor. Even if he was clearly deceitful and selfish, something about its primal nature made her feel welcomed. She still had no proper name for it, as the devourer refused to be given one, just titles. According to it, he could find names only as redundant and unnatural. Sometimes, Clone envied his straightforward way of thinking. The worm had always tried to teach her the, her the cynical realities of the world. It's kill or be killed, young one. Hesitate one too many times, and your head will be the next trophy on another's wall. Of course, he continued. I wouldn't do that. I'd just eat you whole. Although it was a very clear threat, she spent enough time around him to know that threats and jokes were one and the same to him. Perhaps, she realized, she picked up that humor of his, and that was why she, her idea of a joke was to threaten to burn people alive. Though, upon further consideration, she realized unlike the DOG, she was seriously not ready to burn people alive. <laughs>